good this C6 Hey guys, welcome back to RBR. Now the last time that we discussed AMD's biggest release of the year, which is the upcoming A45S and CLA45S, we focused on the drift mode of the car based on the car's 4Matic Plus system, just like the E63S and the GT63S. But as far as the engine went, all I could share with you was a bit of theory and rumors that I'd heard. But I heard today that the engine production for that new engine has finished. So why don't we sneak into a falter bark and see what's going on? Don't worry, we're not going to drive. It's only going to take a second. Oh, great. Brought the British weather with me as well. Anyway, guys, as you can see, we're at a brand new engine plant for AMG. And this one is specifically for the new 45 engine. And it's not just new in name. It's actually a completely different workflow to what they've done in the past with the V8 and the other engines that AMG have produced. In fact, the area looks so different, it's almost unrecognizable. But before I show you that, let's first go over some of AMG's engine history and have a look at the new unit, then I'll show you how it's created and how it's so different to what they've done before. And of course, we'll get to the juicy bits like all the power and stuff that we know now. So let's not waste any time. Go inside, because I'm getting wet out here. So guys, here it is, the brand new M139 engine. And this is of course for the new A45, CLA45 and that compact flagship section of the AMG family. But before I delve into this, just a very quick overview of the engines that AMG have done in the past from the ground up. Now perhaps the most famous one is the 6.2 litre naturally aspirated engine. You guys know this from say, the old C63, the C63 Black Series, the SLS AMG, one of the most awarded engines ever, and frankly, probably the best sounding engine ever. And this was their first one completely from the ground up, built by AMG for their cars. After this came the 5.5 liter bi-turbo, the M157, of course, a turbo engine that replaced the natural one. Everyone was worried about the sound. They were kind of right about that until the last few cars, but this engine brought more torque, though it was a little bit laggy. And you'll remember this from stuff like the GLE 63, the E63S, the first one of its kind, and all of the big flagship AMGs during that era. After this came the predecessor to the A45's engine, and that was the M133, the most powerful four-cylinder production engine ever made. And the power to weight ratio was absolutely insane in this engine and it's a tough act to follow. And that engine was so pivotal for AMG that eventually it became the basis for what I consider to be their best engine, the four liter bi-turbo that is currently in the AMG GT, the C63, the entire V8 family of current AMGs. And it had essentially two of those M133 engines bolted together in a V8 shape and it produces up to, at the moment, 635 brake horsepower. But the benefit of that engine compared to the previous one was there was no turbo lag thanks to the hot V setup. And you still had the torque, you still had the feel of a natural engine, and you had incredible sound compared to the 5.5. And to me, in lower speeds, a lot better than even the 6.2. But today, we look at the successor to the 133. And this baby is now gonna power the new generation of flagship 45 cars, as I said. But before I go over this baby, we have been given world exclusive behind the scenes camera access to the brand new state of the art production facility for this engine. So let's go and take a look right now. Hey guys, we are in AMG's brand new production facility for the new engine for the 45 series. I'm gonna give you a little look around. So let's have a look at the current V8 production facility at AMG. You can see tools hanging from the ceiling. You can see all the parts and compartments behind a lot less light, a lot less space. Of course, it's still one man, one engine, or one woman, one engine, but it's a much more traditional place to build an engine compared to the new ultra-modern one. Now let's compare this to the new ultra-modern one. You can see how cluttered the previous one was. It's a lot more busy than this in terms of pure space. Just look how lighted the new area is. You can see the brand new engine there. 
Also our friend F1 Mike, working away, training. <laughs> what a dude. Just look at the difference. If I show you what the previous place looked like compared to this, it's a wholesale change. Now each engine gets its own compartment of parts, which you can see here, labeled up one, two, three, four, specifically for that. There's no tools or hardly any hanging from the ceiling now. Now you'll notice with the dedicated parts cabinet, it's actually moving by itself. That's because it's a semi-autonomous robot and it follows the engine builder with the engine as it goes around this new production system. Look how quiet the place is compared to the previous one as well. It's a massive change. And maybe we can even expect this to be rolled out into, into the future, into all other AMG engines. But at the moment, a huge change, a new direction for the compact segment as far as methodology of production goes. And what's interesting is this new engine takes half the time to build, half the time compared to your current V8 production in the old facility. Huge advancements in terms of time taken, in terms of the processes, but it is a more complicated engine than the old one, yet it's still done faster. So good luck to Mike and all the engine builders here for the future. See it in the car soon, we'll hear it. Now, when you read the actual spec sheet, it seems very similar to its predecessor. In fact, almost identical. The size of the engine is identical. It's 1991. It's a two liter. It's a four pot. It produces a lot more power than that engine, but generally speaking, the twin scroll turbocharger and everything about it, on the face of it, seems very similar. But a lot has changed in this engine, and that's why we had to come here and have a look at it properly to really relate to you guys how much effort AMG have gone to in order to not only make the car more powerful, but more relevant for today's emission problems and other things that manufacturers have to face. So first of all, nothing is shared with the previous engine. Even though it seems so similar, no parts are shared here. The second thing was the engine has been rotated completely 180 degrees in order to fit into a tighter compartment. So you can see, for example, things like having the air intake in the front compared to where it was before. We've got the exhaust release on the back. We've now got an all aluminum crankcase. I wanna show you exactly what that looks like. This is of course reducing weight, but the way it's been constructed is also to let more heat out because this engine is more powerful. We've also got a new twin scroll turbocharger, which is completely different. It's also a little bit lighter. We've got an electronically controlled wastegate, which is more accurate and reduces loss of boost pressure. And as I said, it's a kg lighter than the old one. It also has a massive 2.1 bar boost pressure in the S model. Now that cylinder head has a completely new design. If you look at the top of it, you'll notice the curvature. That's because the plugs and injectors are rotated at 90 degrees compared to the previous engine. And that allows for the larger exhaust valves that are now situated at the rear. And can we just admire the look of the engine case? It looks so much better than the last version, which had that typical tranny engine design. The symmetrical look is like big boy AMGs with the plaque dead center in the faux carbon fiber. Now, of course, with the 180 degree turn, and more power and the plumbing change of the shape of the engine, it means that there's a lot more heat. So there's three systems of cooling to combat heat creation. We've got water cooling, oil cooling, and even the engine cover from the bottom is designed aerodynamically to cool the engine and even the chill from your AC unit helps. What all this means is the engine can be used under load longer and it'll be more reliable. But you don't care about that. You want to know how much it produces. In its standard form, it's got 387 brake horsepower. But there is an S model this time in the A45, which is going to have 421 brake horsepower, one of the most powerful four-cylinder engines in the world. And that's all going to power, as we saw in our first preview of the prototype, a Formatic Plus drift-capable crazy hatchback and hopefully in a CLA 45S coupe as well. Torque in the S model is up to 500 Newton meters too, but most importantly, the torque curve has changed from a very flat one to one that mimics the feel of a naturally aspirated engine with a much more natural torque curve. Oh, and this beastly unit revs higher than the predecessor too, all the way up to 7,200. So even though the specs tell you it's similar to the previous engine, you can see it's a completely different, much more complicated, much more clever and more powerful unit. Will this one also form the basis for future bigger AMG engines like the last one? 
or maybe it'll get a big boost of power from EQ Boost. I think so. So guys, I hope you enjoyed this world exclusive look not only in the inside of the new engine facility, but also at this engine. It is gorgeous. I'm hoping we'll get to see the new A45S soon and maybe even the CLA. My bet is maybe even at Goodwood this July. Let's hope, fingers crossed. But until that, I best get back home because uh, I'm running out of time. See ya.